Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence, with Just Ask Podcast Live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. As usual, we try to bring in some very supportive information for you so that you have an idea of what's going on in the community and around about the state of Michigan. Now, today is our special show, COVID-19 panel discussion, and we have two wonderful, uh, very important ladies with us joining us. So you know one of them, and the other one she's going to introduce for us. So without further ado, we want to first introduce... Uh, my co-host for today, Executive Director Lori Sanders of Disability Network, Wayne County, Detroit. Hey, Miss Sanders. Hello, Marsha. How are you? I'm fine. Glad to see you. Good to see you. Good, good, good. Now, Lori, you know how we do this. It's the COVID-19 panel discussion, and I see you brought a lovely guest with us today. So who do we have with us? We have Commissioner Nicole Small, and um, she's with the Detroit Charter Revision. Okay, well, good afternoon, Miss Small. Good afternoon. Glad to have you aboard. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you. Now, ladies, I know the viewers are saying, well, who does what? So, Lori, can we start with you? Give us a little history about your role uh, at Disability Network and what's going on over there. And then, Commissioner, we're definitely going to piggyback and come to you and get some information about you. Absolutely, Marsha. Um, I'm the executive director of the Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit, and um, we are a community service organization, a community service nonprofit organization, and we work specifically, um, we're a SIL also, and that's a Center for Independent Living. And Centers for Independent Living are organizations that are designed and developed by individuals with disabilities to support and provide uh, education and advocacy for individuals with all kinds of disabilities. And our main goal and focus is to make sure that people with in with disabilities are able to live independently in their community on their own. Okay. Okay. Now, Commissioner, can you come in here and tell us a little bit about yourself and your role as the commissioner? Yeah. So I'm the vice chair of the Detroit Charter Revision Commission, which is our city, our city's constitution. Every city and township has a charter in a city and a constitution. So uh, some of the things that we've worked with that are pertinent to persons living with disabilities is to establish a department for persons with disabilities and also to create a commission uh, for those persons. And we're looking to make sure that we provide them with policies that will further support and improve their quality of life. And, you know, we've partnered, I've personally partnered uh, with the Disability Network on a couple of efforts and in some of their events because it's so important that this is a wraparound effort from um, many entities, whether it's city government or independent organizations like the Disability Network. Okay, okay, well. Now, ladies, you know, the first question I want to ask, and, and Lori, I'd like to start with you. How did how did COVID-19 affect uh, the Disability Network? How has it affected your services? Um, initially, a, a year ago, Marsha, uh, in March, it had a huge impact on the disability network as well as our consumers. And one of the first things that impacted was how we delivered services because my staff, we had to actually close our doors. We were no longer able to provide face-to-face -face services for our consumers. Um, my staff had to actually go home and work remotely. and for the large part, other than um, the outreach services that we do in the community, we are still working um, remotely from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Commissioner, now I know, you know, uh, you are a commissioner, but I know it has to have some impact on you guys' work as well. Yes, um, you know, the, with the work that we do now requires a huge portion of engagement directly with the citizens of Detroit. Um, so what we had to do was do an immediate transition uh, to doing a lot of our work virtually. Uh, but in this city, we have a huge digital divide, which definitely handicaps a lot of opportunities uh, for a lot of Detroiters to participate in crafting these policies and these safeguards that not only protect the interests um, for those residents, but also to improve their quality of life. So I think it was an immediate shift for a lot of us, um, not just trying to wrap our heads around like what is happening because we experienced a huge uh, degree of loss uh, with a lot of our family members, friends, and also some of our constituents. 
Um, but I think more specifically to make sure how one of the populations that is underserved, which are the persons with disability, to make sure that we check on them and we provide them with the services that they need to be a part of this process, which is revising our city's constitution. Okay, thank you. So, Lori, did you guys have to design or create any type of particular services to support persons with disabilities during the pandemic time? You know what, Marsha, everything had to be developed um, literally in real time, you know, and, and the innovation and the, the, the direction that we went in was very much based on the need of the community. Initially, people in, in the community didn't have access to, to COVID testing. So being a part uh, partner with other organizations to be able to provide um, COVID testing for our, our consumers, being able to provide food distributions. You know, if you tested positive with COVID, you really weren't supposed to be at, at the supermarkets, you weren't mm -hmm. supposed to be at any food distributions. And a lot of those people that tested COVID, tested positive early on, they had no access to food. So it was very important that we started those food distributions that we beyond um, food distributions, even delivering food and food boxes to, to homes. So, um, and, and, and it still continues to be a lot of home-based services because a lot of individuals with disabilities are just not able to get back out into the community right now. You know, it's, it's a sad situation, but I do um, want to uh, bring up one of the photos that we receive in reference to your new, and you got to tell us about this, this fresh food delivery truck. Now, this is, this is just outright gorgeous. So tell us about the fresh food delivery truck and, you know, how is it being utilized in the community? Well, first, I have to tell you that um, a gentleman, uh, Michael, um, he actually, we did a campaign. So an individual with a disability actually designed that canvas for that truck. So I, oh, wow. I, would, I definitely had to let you know that. But um, what this was, this is, you know, we always find that people in the community, they don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. That's always been a, a challenge, um, being able to have that accessibility. So what this food truck, uh, is to go into the communities and be able to provide that, uh, provide that distribution of fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. for our consumers. And we've expanded that mobile market to you where we have actually partnered with the city of Redford um, and we have land there that they're going to allow us to do, to start with 15 um, plant boxes mm -hmm. where we will begin to grow uh, a lot of our fruits and vegetables that we will be able to supply that food truck will, with. And that's going to also allow us to provide employment and training in um, urban gardening for our consumers as well. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. That is really nice. I was re really impressed with that truck. And Lori, I know that you've worked with uh, some greenhouses in the, in the past to develop and, you know, produ produce produce and stuff for the elderly and the disabled. Are you still working with those type of organizations as well? Is it a combination? Absolutely. We are still, uh, we still maintain a, a relationship, a very strong relationship with Featherstone Garden, okay. which is an urban garden um, in the city of Detroit on the east side on Lake Point. And um, Aaron Smith um, and Annie uh, run that, that that urban garden in the city, mm -hmm. and they will actually be working with us to to do all the cultivating for our garden that we're going to be doing in Redford. So you know, we worked really strong with um, Featherstone last year. They were actually producing um, greens and vegetables that we were giving our consumers every week. We had a delivery going out, Great. so we're even expanding that with them, and they will be teaching us how to be urban gardeners ourselves and they will be working with us in Redford on our new project that's that expands wonderful. the mobile market to you. That's wonderful. That's really nice, really nice. Commissioner, let me ask you this. What do you think is one of the greatest needs right now uh, amongst the communities during the pandemic? Um, we must address the level of fear uh, that we have and sharing of information. Um, I think a lot of our residents are receiving just sound bites of what's going on, whether or not it's with the COVID numbers, um, 
whether or not the number of people who have been vaccinated is just not a more, we need more of a holistic approach. Let me say that to share information and to make sure that people understand we still are within a pandemic. So things like wearing your mask are also very important and figuring out a new way to be able to engage uh, with our neighbors, with our community in a more safe way and have more safer practices. So I think we need to do a better job of targeting that, especially as we're about to enter into the fall and the winter months Mm -hmm. of where, you know, there may be a larger uptick again in the COVID numbers. Okay. Okay. Because a lot of times what's what's going on now, people are trying to enjoy themselves during the summer months and you got half the community that's vaccinated and the other half that's not. And people are saying, well, if you're vaccinated, I'm not. We still should be able to get together. And, you know, and no one wants to be put on the spot about being vaccinated. But now it's getting to that point where if you're going to be on the plane, if you're going to go on a cruise, I mean, they got it lined up where first they weren't they weren't going to mandate it, but now they are. And then yet, even if they don't mandate it, they single people out and it's going to cause, you know, a a, a ruckus amongst the community and people, period, to be singled out. I'm vaccinated. You're not. Well, you know, um, overall, we got children that should not or cannot be vaccinated. We have people with disabilities that may not be able to be vaccinated. So we still have levels of individuals who cannot be vaccinated for various health health reasons and health challenges. And we need to find a way to combine the efforts for people to understand that if a person chooses not to be vaccinated, it may be of a health crisis that they cannot be vaccinated according to whatever the condition is. It's people with cancer that's concerned about what they cancer be affected and they have to talk to their doctors but even talking to their doctors doesn't mean the doctor knows that this vaccination will not affect the cancer cells so it's a lot on the table but we do need to educate our viewers to speak to their uh, physicians and understand what is be what is to be expected if you are to get vaccinated i know a lot of times um uh, I like myself, I say, well, you know what, maybe people shouldn't drink or maybe people shouldn't smoke or maybe people shouldn't take uh, medical marijuana. You know, give yourself a break from some things so that when you do get vaccinated, you won't say, well, it causes this effect or it did this to me. You need to have your system as clean as possible in order for you to know what has happened to you when you get vaccinated. And that's just oh, wow. my opinion. Yeah. But I also think that um, with some of the recent stories that we've seen, um, people are still being uh, affected with COVID after being double vaccinated. Mm-hmm. We've just had a couple of people who have passed away. So now, you know, we're talking about a booster shot possibly coming out from Pfizer. And so then you're going to have the whole issue of whether or not people trust that. But for me, I think that also wearing your mask does help, especially in enclosed uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. I just was recently watching a large event and no one had a mask on and they were packed in there. I mean, it was probably no breathing room. And so we need to have that conversation too. Like, is it really time to be inside in close proximity? Um, of where you're going to be full to capacity to not wear your mask. Sharing the information and sharing the right information is so important, especially to our community. It is. Because we've been... Okay, I'm sorry, Commissioner, you froze for a second, but you're on the roll there. <laughs> you're definitely on the roll with your information. So, you know what, now, now, Lori, I wanted to ask you this, because a lot of people don't know about your mission, and I had this lovely photo that I wanted to bring up about your mission. Commissioner, we'll come back to you. I know you had a sound break in there, but we'll come right back oh, to you. So, Lori, I'm, I'm, I love this photo here of uh, the mission. Our mission is to empower, educate, advocate for individuals with disabilities while promoting independent living inclusion and accessible pathways that is such a heartfelt uh photo and the mission definitely stands to truth so let me know is is it across the board that all the agencies that you work with you all have the same vision for persons with disabilities and seniors or is this just uh disability networks vision you know um we all cater um our mission statements to our senders independently, but the basis, um, inclusion, 
accessibility and independence for people with disabilities. That's the core mission of any CIL mm -hmm. and CIL being a center for independent living. So we share the same goals. We just made shoes to to make that narrative a little bit different, but the basis is going to be the same. Okay, and I noticed you have uh, your core service list listed here. So is this basically the services that overall you guys provide? Yes, um, our course, and when we talk about our core services, Marsha, you're talking about advocacy, peer support, information and referral, um, transition, transitioning out of nursing homes back into the community, as well as youth transition services as well. And then we have uh, additional services that we have, like the mobile market to you is a, 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 a different service that we have. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of our services. We have an independent living institute where youth or people with disabilities are able to go into an apartment and we provide them with a full curriculum to provide them with that experience of living in an apartment, living independently in the community on their own. Uh, we have benefit planning. That is so very important. You know, a lot of individuals uh, with disabilities, some don't know that they can work. Some don't know that they can make a, a certain amount of money and they still don't lose their benefits. Right. And then that's still creating a higher level of independence. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a huge caveat of, of services that we provide. And what you will find, we all have core services that we provide every uh, seal in the state of Michigan, but we have different services because we serve different populations. You know, my services are not gonna be the same as the Center for Independent Living that's in the upper P. You know, it, because my needs are different, my community needs are different. Mm -hmm. So that's where we get to have those variables and those different services to reach the individuals that we serve. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, that's understandable. And you know, what we don't see is that the service providing agencies are coming together. You know, you guys are all coming together to find resolutions to help people with disabilities and the seniors as well get through this period of COVID-19. I mean, the families are already stressed out, stretched out and everything else above. So you got the, the parents, the, the kids, the grandparents, the disabled person may all be in one household or the elderly person may be in a nursing facility and it's a lot of uh, chaos going on because you know no one family is excluded from all what's going on and uh, Lori so let me ask you now do you guys find a way to assist the caregivers during these times too or can you refer caregivers uh, resources out to a family who may be struggling with trying to take care of a disabled person as well as an elderly person Here's two things that we have, Marsha. We have um, a program, it's called our Living Well Program, and that's actually a program for the caregivers. Um, that is a program that allows the caregiver to engage in healthy eating, exercise, music, art. So that is a program that we have that is directly for um, caregivers because if your caregiver goes out, the caregiver can't pr pr provide any help for the person that they're providing care for. So it's very important for the caregiver to be well and have a sense of wellness as well. So that's a very holistic um, program that we have. And um, Eleanor Johnson, one of my staff, uh, she provides that service and she she just took a group out to the Detroit Zoo on Thursday. So she's always planning new ideas um, in, in terms of recreation and outlets for her seniors and the individuals that are in that program. Okay, I need to sign up. Okay. <laughs> been a caregiver for years. I need to sign up. Need a break. Okay. 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 Now, uh, Commissioner, you know, now how do you tie in with uh, Disability Network? So, um, my work in the community, actually, I've worked with a couple of different community, uh, disability community organizations. And so it just seemed to be a good fit after seeing the work the Disability Network has done and still is doing. They kind of 
in my opinion, are the umbrella for a lot of the other local organizations that are doing similar work, but might be more specific to whether or not you have a mobility uh, disability, whether it's a hearing disability or a vision disability. Disability Network kind of encompasses all of that. So I have definitely supported them and worked with them on some of the events. Uh, we've worked on some policies, uh, definitely lending uh, the work that I do with working in the political sector, with partnering them with some of uh, the representatives that we have, whether it's on the state or the local level, to make sure that this effort in order to support this actual community is uh, being done at both, like I said, the state and the local level and also again the work that we have done in the charter again that's our city's constitution we must have policies and writing that protect the best interests of our persons who are most added valuable asset to our community which are people living with disabilities okay wonderfully said thank you so much commissioner wonderfully said okay ladies i you know i i'm speechless today because a lot of times uh, you know, I have a group of questions for you, but you answered everything I have. And I'm sure some of our viewers are, 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 you know, inquisitive about when they can contact you and how they can contact you. So, Lori, we do definitely have uh, your number up there. Is that the 313-923-1655 number? Is that yes, your number? Okay, your okay, okay. So people will be able to call directly and ask questions if they need to. And a lot of times people, when they see Just As Talk Show, they are more inclined to call because once they get a chance to hear you directly talk about the services that you provide and the resources that are available, that uh, sets off a, a bell. So they're like, oh, yeah, I got a call. A lot of our viewers are not readers anymore. A lot of people don't like reading that much. And I'm be honest, I'm not a big reader. I have to, but I don't like to. But if I can watch watch a program and obtain the same information or even more so that will prompt me to call or get involved even faster and so we uh, applaud you ladies both for giving us the resources that you uh, have today to talk about how to you know control this COVID-19 or put a put a cap on it for people and you know now Lori let me ask you this before we wrap mm -hmm. up um, people are looking for uh, supplies do Disability Network have the mask or any hand sanitizer do you guys distribute any of those things as well or do oh, you have yeah. contacts that was that was one of the first initiatives um, that we had um, providing PPE equipment mm -hmm. and supplies and we still have those things available okay um, can yeah, people so call you and, and, yes, and we can. okay okay and commissioner the same thing now I, I know your line of work is a little bit different but is there a way <laughs> that people can contact and ask for you know pp pp uh supplies or pp supplies okay <laughs> you know what i'm talking about so so can people ask for supplies or find out where they can get supplies or anything so actually uh they can uh, but I will say this, usually the supplies that I get are from uh, other representatives like county commissioners and other local uh, representatives. But I ha absolutely have no problem. I, too, have been doing uh, that, putting forth that effort as well since the pandemic. So they can reach out to me either at the Charter Commission or they can call me at 313-451-2228. Okay. And that is 313-451-2228. Okay, we'll put that number in later. I'm sorry we didn't have that up, but we do have the contact at DetroitCharter2018.com. So yeah. is that one way they can reach you as well? Yes, yes. So that's okay. our that's our site, and they can go directly on there, and they can contact me directly. Okay, 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 great. That's one thing I like to know about. People always want to know, how can I talk to those lovely ladies? Okay, <laughs> so be prepared, all right? So, well, Lauren, you know what? I know you guys have some events coming up real soon, especially for uh, the coming months, you know, as it, it gets colder and everything, and we want you to keep us informed and definitely contact us when things do, you know, start to change around about what services are out there, especially the Urban Garden. Is the Urban Garden going to be all year long? The delivery truck, uh, is that going to be all year long? Yeah, we're working um, closely with Featherstone to be able to do that. You know, they have the created will. So we are just going to, they're going to be our go-to person so we can really duplicate 
um, what they're doing. It's going to be on a much smaller scale because we'll be using the plant boxes, but we are definitely, um, they're working with us to make sure that we're able to duplicate that and be able to provide that year round. Okay. So for now, uh, the food delivery is connected to, is it connected to the farmers or is it connected to the supermarket, the stores? Right now, what we're doing, Marsha, we have a partnership with, um, Hungry Harvest, and they deliver boxes to us, and that's how we've been able to stock up the the mobile market to you mm -hmm. to do deliveries, and we're doing that every Thursday. And um, you can go on our website and see where we're doing those distributions at because we like to change. We don't like to stay at any one place any longer than a couple weeks because we want to be able to go around the community. And then that's when you're able to see what locations we would be dis distributing um, those boxes. And that's how we're going to be doing it until we can start getting that growth and getting that surplus and we're able to do it from our garden ourselves. Okay, now is there a sign-in sheet or contact method that a person needs to use to become a recipient of the uh, mobile truck? In, sep in, sep in October the 1st, we will start doing that kind of sign-up, and they'll be able to go onto that website, sign up, and we'll be able to do deliveries based on that okay. information that we receive from our website. Okay, okay, so that means you're going to come back and see me in October. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody gonna call me and say it's October. What that lady said. <laughs> okay. So, so we definitely want to have you come back and tell us again in October. It's sign in time. Okay. But okay. ladies and gentlemen, you can actually just take down the uh, the web information. Let me put that back up right quick. So you can actually take down the web information and the phone number and call periodically and find out what the services are and when that food truck is available in your area. So don't look at it like it's the end of the world. Like, oh, they're not in my area. So, Lori, you said you, you guys are traveling around. So Yes, can, we do. See? You can't go yeah. wrong with a traveling food truck. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> that's one thing that's really good. So, yeah, hopefully people will see that number and your email uh, web address down there and they'll be able to call. Or you can always give us a call 1-800-323-5336. 1-800-323-5336, Just Ask Talk Show. And, you know, definitely I'm going to pass the word to the necessary parties so that you can get your information in. You got questions for them, send us a question. And definitely that those questions will go to Facebook.com or, no, sorry, Marsha at JustAskTalkShow.org or, or go to the website JustAskTalkShow.org. Well, ladies, I want to thank you both for joining me today. And, Commissioner, will you come back again? Absolutely, I will. And thank you so much for having me today. Well, I enjoyed th this. Well, thank you for taking out time from your busy schedule. We know you are, and uh, we appreciate you being involved with uh, Disability Network, and we look forward to having you join us in the future. Thank you. Okay, Lori, I don't have to yes. tell you to come back. I know you'll be back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lori, I hope to see you again, too. And so thank you so much, and we look forward to supporting uh, your efforts out here with the Disability Network. And anyone who needs, needs some information, we'll definitely send that information your way. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Answer. What do I always say? If you have a question about a person with a disability or if you just have a general question, don't be afraid to ask. Just ask. See you next time.